Hey, what's up? My name's Justin, and this is 65 Drums. Today's another episode of 65 Questions, the weekly Monday show where we just answer user-submitted questions about the world of electronic drums. All right, so the first question from this week is from Alex, who writes, Hey, Justin, thanks a lot for your content on YouTube. I've been playing for over a decade now, but recently decided to buy an electronic drum set to play in my apartment. Over here in Germany, we have some weird pricing on some of these kits. So I was wondering if you could give me your thoughts on two of these drum sets. The Elisus Nitro Mesh for 400 euros, or the Yamaha DTX 432K for about 460 euros. Would you recommend getting the 432K instead of the Elisus Nitro? It's not mesh, but I figure it'll last longer than Elisus. Any recommendations? So honestly, that's the weird thing about buying electronic drums in different countries, because the prices can range quite a bit. In the United States, these two drum sets aren't competing with each other because one is $350 and one is $600. But in Europe, it looks like they're almost the same price, so you're gonna have to choose between these two. Now, I don't think there's a clear-cut winner here because some people will go with the Elisus one because they value mesh pads. And some people will go with the Yamaha drum set because they value the better sounds and the better build quality. It's really going to be up to you. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards the Yamaha one because I want to play it for a while and then maybe resell it down the line. Maybe you want to get the Elisus one because it's more fun to play and you're willing to sacrifice some of the sound quality. Both these drum sets are good for what they are. Um, but I feel like Yamaha, I, I was a little bit disappointed when Yamaha came out with a 432K because I thought they would have started, you know, putting more features on the low end of the range. Electronic drums are getting more and more competitive. There was a time when you couldn't even imagine electronic drums being sold for $300 with all mesh pads. Now that companies are doing that, now that the patents have been loosened up and everything, um, companies have, they basically have to put more features on the low cheap stuff. And Yamaha just is making drum sets just as you know, if it was like 2009 or something. Now, as always, I'm just a guy on YouTube that has opinions on electronic drums. I really want to know what you guys think too. So I've actually created a poll right up here on the corner of the screen, or probably over here because the image is flipped. Uh, go vote which one you would buy, the Yamaha one or the Elisus one. Okay, so the next question comes from the 65 Drums Facebook group. This is a really cool group on Facebook. It's not that old, but it's got about 2,000 members, people posting drum covers, asking questions about electronic drums, selling their stuff, or even giving advice that they've recently learned about electronic drums. So this question from Seth was, how do you play believable hand percussion on electronic drums? This is one of those things where it sounds easier to do than it actually is, because we tend to play different patterns with drum sticks versus our hands. It actually came from playing djembe before he ever got a drum set, and I played differently on a djembe than I played on an actual drum set. So you're gonna have to get in the mentality of actually playing like hand percussion patterns on the drums, and that's what's really going to make it feel more authentic, at least to the audience. You'll choose a world percussion kit in your drum module, because most electronic drum sets already have one of those already, and maybe modify it a little bit. Maybe have some like some of the, like the sharp attack tones from hitting the edge of a djembe on tom one, maybe some of the deep tones on maybe your kick drum, maybe some different, you know, I don't know. You're gonna have to experiment a lot, but I think it really comes down to the pattern you're playing with your hands. You even get better results from buying a dedicated hand percussion pad. The two best ones on the market right now, at least in my opinion, are the Korg Wave Drum and the Roland Hand Sonic. The Roland Hand Sonic I feel like is more powerful because it has lots and lots of individual zones. I've played different iterations, different generations of this pad, and they keep getting better and better. They even have like this little electronic eye. You can wave your hand over it and get like chime sounds. It's a very powerful pad, but I feel like it's overkill for 99% of drummers. Roland is charging way too much for this thing, but you know, it's Roland, so that's what they do. The Korg Wave Drum is a little bit simpler. It's a lot easier to use, and I feel like for most drummers, that will be the better one to buy, especially if you buy it used, because most drummers that play a full drum set, they're only gonna use hand percussion on a song or two, so you don't wanna spend you know a thousand bucks on something. Now, like I said earlier, this was a community question, so a bunch of different people in the group answered the question too. Joey wrote, it's a bit more challenging because the module can't interpret the nuances of the acoustic hand percussion. Try adjusting the velocity and sensitivity of the pads and try to play more simpler rhythms until you can get a handle of the tonal limitations of the drum module. If you're using a rolling drum module, sometimes the hand percussion stuff can sound a little bit fake because they focus more on the treble. So he recommended sort of like cutting a little bit of the highs and boosting the mids or the lows. And then of course, one last thing you could do is just film yourself while you're playing. It might sound right while you're playing it, but when you step back and actually listen to a recording of yourself, you can pick out things that don't sound like they came from an actual djembe, congo, or bongo. All right, so let's jump ahead to the next question. Hey Justin, I really like the appearance of acoustic drums. So the pads on the TD25KV are just too small for me. What do you think about buying a pre-built drum set? And would you recommend drum tech products, such as maybe the drum tech jam big rock kit? 
This drum set is carrying the TD-17 drum module, and I think all the inputs are maxed out, so I can't add another cymbal, or am I wrong? So in the world of electronic drums, if you like conversion kits, there's two basic camps. There's the people that will buy all the triggers themselves, all the mesh heads, all the cymbals, the drum module, all the cables. They're ordering from five different websites. They're customizing their dream drum set and installing it themselves. Sometimes people even solder together the triggers themselves and they really go DIY on that thing. Then there's the people that just don't want to mess with all that. They know it's going to take them hours to do the research and, you know, installing and stuff. They just want to buy a pre-built drum set that will work out of the box and you don't have to mess with anything. This guy is more in the camp where he just wants something that works out of the box. I completely respect that. The only thing is it's going to be a little bit more expensive. If you are willing to buy a pre-built drum set and you have the money, Drum Tech makes incredible looking drum sets. So the drum set he's mentioning right here is a really cool set. It has the two floor toms, two high toms, two crashes, one ride, hi-hat on a stand, and the 18-inch bass drum. This kit looks incredible, and it's about the price of like a TD-25 KVX. Actually, probably a little bit cheaper. So like you said in the question, yes, this is carrying a TD-17 drum module, and it's a bare bones like entry-level drum module. It's completely maxed out here, and you can't add any more pads with full zones. But if you want to split some of the zones, you can add more cymbals. This is a really cool thing. With crash cymbals, I'm willing to go with just a one-zone cymbal pad if I have to. So for example, if you buy a couple drum splitters, there's a great website called drumsplitters.com where they sell you these drum splitters. You can actually take away the two zones of those crash cymbals and have four crash cymbals that are single zone. So you can make this drum set a lot bigger. You could even take away some of the rim zones from the toms and make those crashes as well. You're gonna get a drum set that doesn't have as many zones, but you will have many more cymbals. So it's really up to you, or you could just upgrade to like a TD-30 or something if you wanted to. Okay, so the next question comes from Danko who writes, Hey Justin, I was just wondering if you need a good PC for programs such as Superior Drummer to work properly, at least in terms of triggering MIDI signals from a drum module, because my PC is very old and at this point it barely works. Thanks in advance and greetings from Chile. Hashtag PDPD. I see what you did there. Okay, so this question is kind of nuanced because every program has a minimum PC requirement. In fact, if you go on websites, you can find the minimum PC requirement for Easy Drummer, which I'll put up on screen, the minimum requirements for like Superior Drummer 3, and maybe even like Steven Slate Drums 4 or 5 or something. There's minimum requirements for every PC. So as you can see from the numbers right there, it really depends on the program. Easy Drummer 2 works on a Pentium processor. When was the last time you had one of those? I think I had a Windows XP machine back then. Meanwhile, Superior Drummer 3 needs four times the amount of RAM and 50 times the amount of disk drive space. So it really depends on the program. Easy Drummer 2 will work on almost anything. I had it working on uh, you know, a cheaper Toshiba laptop. Actually, it wasn't cheaper when I bought it, but it's cheaper now. Meanwhile, Superior Drummer 3 needs something a little bit more powerful. And remember, those numbers right there might be a tad low for our purposes because as electronic drummers, we're trying to run all this stuff at three milliseconds of latency. And you need more powerful hardware and at least a nice sound card or a good audio interface to achieve that sort of thing. So keep all that in mind. Regular laptops can run Easy Drummer 2, you know, fine with an audio interface. Meanwhile, Superior Drummer 3 might need something a little bit more powerful. And if you happen to have like a Mac or a MacBook Pro, that's even better. All right, and that was the last question. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys have been enjoying this series. I know I do. You guys ask a lot of weird questions that I don't even think about, and it really makes for some good discussion topics. Leave your answers to any of these questions down in the comments below because there's plenty of you out there that know way more about electronic drums than me. Have an amazing day, everybody, and I'll see you next Monday.